So hello guys, welcome back to my channel and yes, we have another pickup review and actually I've been wanting to drive this uh, Maxus T60 for a long long time now and yeah, I want to thank Sir JL and Maxus Makati for allowing me to review this uh, Maxus T60 but this is the 4x4 model what I'll be driving, hold on, I'll go outside, are those this Where's my finger there? This is a 4x2 automatic and the one on the left is a 4x2 manual transmission. So I will drive both to see which is the better choice. And I've always wanted to drive a manual pickup again. Of course, I keep saying I love my status to my heart. But let's see if this Maxus is a very good alternative to my Strada. And yeah, the price surprisingly, even though this one, what I'm featuring here in the showroom, is a top of the line elite 4x4 it's already priced like the gls middle variant that i drove in mitsubishi bgc the strada gls 4x2 you get a lot of features already at this price point so not a bad start for maxus yeah the grille is large yes it's chrome as well but it suits its rugged look actually i like this look it's not too aggressive nor too conservative just just right and then ground clearance of this is 215 millimeters. That's actually 15 more than the Strada, if not mistaken. Yes, I will compare this with the Strada a lot, FIA only. And the Ranger, why not? I keep forgetting I already drove a Ranger. And yeah, it's also a bit cheaper than the Ranger as well. And really good start for the Pro, sorry, that's what it's called. The manuals are already sub 1 million for a pickup truck, but it's equipped well enough already. The 4x2 is 1 million 78,000 pesos. So, Best bang for the buck SUV? We'll find out in a bit. Okay, differences between the 4x4 and the 4x2 variants. From the exterior, you have auto leveling LED headlights and then LED daytime rallying lights, the DRLs. The Maxus T60 Pros outside are halogen headlights only. I will get to the differences between this and the ones outside, don't worry. But mostly the differences are in the interior, but I'll get I'll just finish in the exterior bit. Okay, the design of the wheels, okay, not too bad. They look small though, in my opinion only, but it's still alright. You have a T60 logo here, but at least it's not trying to be like a fake vent or anything. So it's still nice. Side mirrors, it's very simple. The side step it's quite small. Huh? Yeah, that was my complaint with the D60 over there. The side steps were really small. This one just enough for my foot. Okay. Just something I noticed only. Also, this uh, 4x4 Elite has chrome door handles. Not much chrome in it, as at least you have a roof rail up there. And then go to the load bed. Okay, the design of this is quite tall, huh? but I like the look. And you even have a curve here to give it a bit more aesthetic. And then outside, then a bump here. I'm not sure if that does anything with aerodynamics. Okay, and then the rear. Okay, it looks tall. Huh? And don't forget, in other countries, this is called an LDV, not a Maxus. So yes, a British origin brand here, but they're already under Saic Motors, a Chinese brand. And then underneath, you have your full-size spare tire, like all pickup trucks. The, the real exhaust is there. It's actually big. But I got intrigued. Kind of like a fake vents here for the exhaust, but just reflectors only. I'm not sure if they do anything. Okay, just lightly. No, no, no. My feet cannot fit in this. So just for aesthetic wise only. And then here you have a still chromed out door handle for the load bed. You have a reverse camera. Yeah, the logos are quite big. So you, so everyone knows what you're driving. Okay. And yeah, the load bed door is kind of heavy, but it's not as heavy as like the Strada. Okay, at least there's a bed liner, unlike some pickup trucks, you still have to add additional bed liner. This one comes with it already. And then you have four tie-down hooks on each corner. So that's nice. Weighting depth of this is 800 millimeters, so on par with the competition as well. This is a very capable off-roader. A shout out to Maxus T60 Club Vivis. I've seen a lot of people off-roading their uh, T60s and modding it, but they're being tested to the limit already. So yes, this is a very capable off-roader. This also has the widest load bed in our market. So this is also one of the most spacious for, in terms of the load bed capacity. So, so far, it's ticking all my boxes for a pickup truck. It's well equipped enough and it's affordable unlike the competition. I want the 4x2, by the way. I keep saying that. I want the 4x2, not the 4x4s. So, that's it. I'll show you the interior. 
So this is the interior of the Maxus T60 4x4 Elite. I'll show you the differences later on with the pros, don't worry. So let's close this. Yeah. There's a lot of plastics that's given, but they look nice at least. Notice something before I show you the interior. There's a lot, there's a big gap here, huh? Oh, from the window and the door card. So, just something I noticed only. So, I'll check later if the pros are like this as well. So, that's something I noticed only. Yeah, there's plastics all around, gloss black here. Silver lining, the door handles chrome. You have adjustments for the mirrors here. And then here on the left side, you have adjustments for the brightness of the digital display. I don't have the key, I'll demo this later. Oh, you get cup holder here on the left side. Just on each side, by the way. And then your window switches here. Your opening for the fuel filler cup is here. You have a cubby space here and a bottle holder on either side. Steering wheel, you have your few blank buttons here, even though this is top of the line model. And then on the right side, Adjustments for the infotainment system, the volume, and then your phone connectivity. Steering wheel, okay. It's hard, it's girthy. There's a very little squidge to it only. And there's silver trim here on the steering wheel as well. Yeah, you have analog gauges throughout, but I'll demo it later. And then the digital display here in the middle. Yeah, going back here, plastics, a cubby here, and oh. I keep forgetting. I wonder if this can fit a vlogging camera. No. Because my mic's attached. But, wait, let me remove that. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's a first. It can somewhat fit, but you just have to attach something for it not to move. Okay, not bad. Look. I wish I can do that, but I don't have anything to attach it on. And now let's go to the key differences between the Elite 4x4 and the Pro 4x2s. As I said, the halogen headlamps for the 4x2. The 4x4 has a start-stop button here. The 4x2s don't. They have a manual type uh, air conditioning control. These are automatic climate controls. And the buttons are all physical, so that's good. And the touchscreen is 10 inches here in the 4x4 Elite. The 4x2s are only 7 inches, but at least they all support Apple CarPlay and six speakers for this 4x4 compared to the four speakers of the 4x2. And you get six way power adjustments for the 4x4. The 4x2 Pros are only manual. Those are the only differences between the variants. So, actually, this is the first time uh, for in this channel. I get to review all of the variants. Yeah, the 4x4, I won't get to dive this, but. This kind of will be the same since the one outside is a 4x2 automatic. And thank you again to Maxus Makati and Sir JL for allowing me to review all of the lineup of the T60. So going back here, you have air con actually the wide air conditioning vents and then physical buttons here. I'll demo this later as well. Don't have the key for this. Silver trimming here on each side. Oh, there's an Econ Power Mode buttons here. One blank button. This is not bad for me. The How it's designed. And then electronic stability control button heal descent button here just funny they're here on the right side and then this is cool you open this it's gloss black by the way you have a very small cubby space and a 12 volt socket here i don't know what this is for it's really small and under here you have two usb ports and a cubby space i wonder if it's enough for a phone perfect <laughs> and it's rubbery so it won't slide around gear lever okay looks nice to say and then i'm not sure if this is plastic or squeegee you can tell the, the silver lining here chrome part and then leather here yeah there is manual mode by the way no paddle shifters by the way for the t60 brands but it's fine since this being a 4x4 you have d your driving modes here if you want we will drive only for high and for low card slots here and then two cup holders and a manual handbag and then central glove box. Okay, that's an, a bit narrow. And this is just, and it's just enough for my phone. And then another weird copy space here. And then glove box is small. Yeah. But it's wide, but it's small. You can even lock it if you want. Also just notice now the pattern here of the plastic is not too bad. Look at that. Okay, that looks nice enough. And I forgot also, 
the differences between the 4x2 Pros and this Elite are the seats. These are leather with red stitching. That's nice. The 4x2 Pros get fabric seats only. And then above here, you have your light controls here. Sunglasses holder. Then visor. There's a ticket clip with the vanity mirror. Hi. Nope, they don't extend. So that's about it here in front. I'll show you the back. Before I go to the back, there's a card slot here and then there's a small storage here for your money and tickets. And then let's go to the back. Oh, there's leather now here? Oh, okay. Sorry. My mistake, I missed. There's leather on the door card with red stitching. That's okay. I thought it was all plastic. So, okay. Mix up for it. But still the same setup. A cabby space and a bottle holder on either side. And then let's go up. We have a grab handle here. It's big enough. Okay, the door sounds reassuring. Huh? So, that's good. That's not my diving position, by the way. But still, and look. Leg room, feet room, and headroom is so spacious in here. Yeah, headroom is okay. It's just like every other pickup truck. But the knee and leg room, wow, this is so spacious. I mean, look at that. That's a lot. Okay, it lacks slightly in thigh support, but you can stretch as much as you want. And then back here, it's the leather at least. You have a seat pocket on either side. They're small, by the way. And then you have air conditioning vents here in the rear with the 12 volt socket. That's your only toys here in the back. There's not even a central armrest, but at least it's the leather seats. Transmission tunnel, that's small, but it's wide, gets in the way, but you can put your feet on top. And then sitting here now in the middle, surprising the seat here in the middle, somewhat the same uh, softness on each side of the seat. And then headroom, just a little bit eaten up. It's, and the seat's not that elevated that much. And also you have isofix anchor points on either side. And then you can hide your Christmas gifts here in the back. Okay, that's more space than the Ranger, I can say, but a bit less than the Strada. But still, at least there is. So, that's about here in the back. I'm done with the load bed. Show the engine. So, this is the engine of the Maxus T60. All of them are the same. It's a 2.8 liter turbocharged diesel engine with 150 horsepower and 360 newton meters of torque. Okay, it's not the most powerful uh, pickup top in its class, but with the amount of reviews I've seen, it gets the job done. So, I, I can't wait to drive it. Okay, the transmissions, by the way, uh, the 4x4 Elite and the 4x2 Pro is mated to a 6 speed automatic transmission. And then for the 4x2 manual, it's a 6 speed manual transmission. But what I noticed also before I forget, I'm reading the spec sheet only. Okay, there are three driving modes by the way, even though they're just only two buttons. You get eco normal and power mode. I will tie them all later. Okay, this is where I got into look at the weight figures. Of course, the 4x4. Uh, Elite, this one, what I'm showcasing in the showroom is 2030 kilo. That's quite heavy. The 4x2 is just a bit heavier than the 4x2 Strata GLS. But look at the weight of the manual transmission 30 kilograms difference. Okay, that, I'm not sure if that's the lightest in class. So I'm very excited to drive this on how will, how will these two compare. So sadly, I cannot drive the 4x4 because there are no demo units of it. But at least I get to drive the 4x2 variants. And that's, those are the models I want anyway. So with that it. Before we have a drive, I will showcase the 4x2s. And then here we have the 4x2. Yeah, they're a bit dusty. Apologies. Yeah, they look the same throughout. Ah, there's the differences. The 4x4 has a chrome grill. This one has a blacked out part of the grill. Okay, in my opinion, this look a bit better. Okay, I'm gonna dive first the automatic uh, 4x2 Pro. Here are the differences, as you can see. Fabric seats now, but still somewhat same setup. Like in the 4x4, the layout of the buttons, yeah, it's a smaller screen now, look at that. That's 7 inches by the way. And also what I noticed, there is no heel descent control button here and electronic stability control for the 4x2s. And this one's uh, just black, it's not gloss black. But still somewhat same setup throughout. And the air conditioning here now is manual type. 
in the back, yeah, still somewhat the same. At least they keep the air conditioning vents and roll fabric now. I like this Agata Red, by the way, for the 4x2. You only can get them for the 4x2s. Okay, something weird I noticed. To adjust the digital display here in the middle, usually there's a button here somewhere. No, it's on the side of the stock. That's really weird, but that's funny. And then here's your infotainment. Yeah, it's, it's quite small though. Be, I'll just be honest. This only has Apple CarPlay, but there's Bluetooth mirror link at least. And then your car settings. Okay, it's responsive enough. Not bad, but you, not much to play with the here. Yeah, yeah, not much. Okay, reverse camera. Yeah, it's not the best. I admit that it's not the best, but at least there is kind of wide also though so I wish I can demo that one with the 4x4 Elite the 10 inch but I think they're just the same so now let's go for a dive okay visibility I'm surprised this has excellent visibility probably one of the better ones I've tested and first impression only I'm just reversing out of the parking lot here the sting is quite heavy but I kind of like heavy sting though since there's a bit more feel with it. You can feel the bumps already immediately. But it's up top and let's floor it. Okay. It's not the fastest thing in the world. But I'm surprising it's torquey enough. But it's br pretty brisk enough as well. Kind of similar to the Ranger Elite. I've driven uh, last around last month. It's not as punchy as the competition, but you get up to speed pretty quickly as well. So not too bad. Okay, let me try manual mode. Okay, there's a lot. There's turbo whistle, which is funny. Okay, the transmission is not too bad. Yeah, surprisingly. Driving dynamics wise, okay, so far so good. Yeah, it feels like every other pickup truck to be honest. It's quite hesitant to downshift. It's the same as I heard in the 4x4 Elite. Yeah, and also difference with the 4x4 Elite, that sting is quite heavier than the 4x2. But this one is light enough for me. The sting is still heavy, but it's not as heavy as you think. It's surprising just enough. Yeah, insulation, yes, you can hear the engine a lot. But here on low speeds, yeah, I love the turbo wheel, so you can hear it. The low speeds around here just in the village is not too bad. And going over humps, big humps here actually. The suspension absorbs them pretty well, even the bumpy part right here in the showroom. Yeah, the NVH. It's kind of similar to a Navara, yeah, that's another competitor for that to mention. Yeah, it's similar to that in terms of the NVH. Everything, the NVH is fine, but you can hear the engine a lot. The automatic transmission is responsive enough. Okay, it's hesitant to downshift when it's on its own, but in manual mode, okay, it's responsive enough. Okay, it automatically off shifts as well. And then there's something I noticed as well, like in just an automatic mode. I'm not sure if it's just this test unit. When you're trying to stop, you can you can actually feel the gearbox engaging, like downshifting. Like it just it you can hear a very small thud. Yes, body lean is also present. Yes, it's a pickup truck. But I won't say it's not too bad. Yeah, here on the curve, yeah, there's body lean, it's noticeable, but it's not too bad, as I said. Okay, I would say performance-wise, this engine is great. Yes, it's, as I said, it's not on par with the home patient, not the most powerful, but it can pick up speeds pretty well. Okay, going at a faster speed now, 60 kph, 70. Okay, I'm not flooring it that much, just partial throttle only. Okay, NVH is not too bad. You, you can keep their engine quiet at this speed, but listen to the NVH. It's actually all right. It's on par with the competition, I will say. Total response is surprisingly good. There's not much of a delay. And the turbo lag, yes, yeah, since being a VGT, there's no, there's no turbo lag at all. 
Yeah, just a little bit hesitation, but well, it picks up really well. Yeah, bumps are noticeable, but it's not too bumpy, unlike some of the competition. Okay, just for comparison only, since I own the Strada and I've driven the current model, would I take this over a uh, Strada? Value-wise, yes. These are way cheaper, these pros. This automatic version is like 1,078,000 pesos. That's like 300,000-ish pesos cheaper than the GLS 4x2 that I've driven. And I'm surprised, yes. It's, this is not as fast as that. And it's not tuned uh, as well as the Strada, just being honest. But uh, this does the jump pretty well. Yeah, and this is also a proven brand as well. In Australia, I've seen a lot of people off-roading this. This has been their daily. Yeah, I would definitely consider, but which is the one I would take? So I'm going back to the zone right now. Would they take the automatic brand or the manual transmission? So let's find out. But I'm already a bit concerned with the manual because these brakes are pretty high. They're similar to the Strada, just just little travel and then it's full on stop. But nevertheless, the brakes are pretty strong. And also fuel consumption. I'm doing a mixed type of driving around in the village and highway driving. I've been averaging 12 liters per 100 kilometers. That's 8.3 kilometers per liter. That's not bad. Huh? Take note. I'm heavy footed as usual, but there's not much traffic. So, on the way back to the showroom now, now let's try out the manual transmission. Okay, this is the interior of the 4x2 manual now. Same setup as in the 4x2 Pro. There, there's a shifty boy. It's also 6 speed. And then, there's a third pedal. Okay, it seems deep, but let's try it out. Also, I forgot to mention the automatic. The I tested it off camera. The eco and power mode. Uh, eco, yeah, hesitates a bit more in the automatic. The power mode is way more responsive. I was just in normal mode most of the time. Okay, I'm gonna try the clutch now for the first time. Oh, we have to press it. Okay. You engage manually. Oh, how to engage manually? You have to push it all the way to you. Okay, the clutch is quite hard. Maybe it's just cold for now. Also, I noticed there's a lack for the 4x2 vans. I'm not sure with the 4x4. There's lack of uh, parking sensors. I just noticed. But there's at least in there. But I wish there were also in front. Okay, I'm, this clutch is quite deep. The bite is also quite high. Okay, it's so refreshing to drive a manual transmission again. I haven't driven a manual pickup in years with our old Stradas. But here in the bumpy part, so far, so far, so good. Still drives the same. Okay. Yeah, you have to have a very strong left foot to use this clutch. But it's kind of sim. It's a bit heavier than the Strada, just being honest. And based on my experience, let's try it out now. good okay not too bad highway mode yes it's all right the clutch release is quite also strong like the kickdown is really strong and yeah the gearbox is quite notchy but still not too bad actually it just feels a bit similar or i think this one just feels a bit more notchier based on my observation only yeah, and here low speeds, yeah, traffic, you might struggle a bit with the clutch, but if you used to have pickup trucks like ours, the Strada manuals, yeah, you'll be fine with this. Yeah, it's so cool to drive a manual again. That, that's a pickup truck. Yeah, I remember also in our Strada, we, I sit all the way forward because of the clutch only. That's why it's a bit off angle for me. Yeah, that release is quite strong. You can get jolted back in your seat. Okay. Uh, tiny eco mode now. Not sure if there's a difference. I can't tell. 
Ah, okay. It hesitates a bit more. Okay, normal mode. Yeah, it's normal. It's all right. So let's try power mode. It's better. The driving modes are just slightly noticeable, even in the automatic. I didn't demo the uh, automatic uh, off camera, but it is the same, like in the manual and the automatic. Okay, yeah, the automatic is quite noisy. Yes, of course, it tends. Uh, that's what I noticed with the automatic. It tends to hang on the gears. The, the gearing is quite long in the automatic that's why I noticed the engine is a bit noisier yes I mean yeah, I'm being biased because of the manual you can keep it you can change gears whenever you want but in the manual mode as well in the automatic T60 yeah it, it, it does hang on the gears pretty long okay the brakes are similar to the automatic just driving in a bit more now yeah the brakes are not as high or as grabby as the Strada the one we have the previous generation models yeah, the brakes has a bit are strong. There's, sometimes it's so sudden, but the tra there's travel to it. It's not too high. There's a like the tra there's a bit more travel than the old Stratos. But brakes are still progressive, so it's still good. Now here on the highway, shake it down. Okay, that's not bad. <laughs> yeah, kick down is quite strong. Yeah, this is actually enjoy to drive. <laughs> yeah, but you will be screwed if you're if you're going to a traffic area. But for me, I'm kind of used to it, so I would take this. Now the big question is, would they take this manual transmission or the automatic variant? Um. That's actually a hard choice because this manual is so affordable. It's like 998,000 pesos. It undercuts all of its competition. I think most of its competition. I'm not sure if there are other models that are sub 1 million pesos. Yeah, like absolute base variants. But for this one, this is even though this is a base variant, you still get tech. The, you can still get the same infotainment like in the automatic variant. There's Apple CarPlay, there's Bluetooth mirroring, there's a reverse camera, there's rear parking sensors. Yeah, the nitpick only is the front parking sensor. Driving a manual pickup again is actually fun. Yeah, it's challenging but it's fun for me. So, value-wise, it, actually it's up to you to decide if you want an automatic or a manual version. But for me, right now, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'll take the manual. Even though the clutch is heavy, but later on, it's not too bad. If Edsa gets full again, yeah, you will struggle just a bit. But yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to own a manual pickup again. But this for the T60, yeah, I would buy one because it on, it's a sub 1 million peso pickup. Truck and it has all the stuff I need for a pickup truck. And it, I also, I keep saying I want 4x2 because I don't off-road that much. But despite being a 4x2, this is still a capable off-roader, hands down. So, that concludes my review of all the Maxus T60 models. I want to thank Sir JL and Maxus Makati for allowing me to review all the T60 models. So, hope you guys like and subscribe. Before I forget, fuel consumption is 11.1 liters per 100 kilometers. That's more efficient than the manual, than the automatic variant. I just put it on screen what it is in kilometers per, per liter, but it's way more efficient. With my driving, light traffic, and heavy footed as usual. So, yeah, then again, hope you guys like and subscribe, and I will see you with more future car reviews. Bye bye.